Mark, this is MagmaWK, and despite having a nice sinus code here, we'll go ahead and show you a cloth, not cloth, how we've been progressing as far as our level ups go. We've been taking advantage of the eye in the ice cave, because now that we have the pro ring and the ribbon, we don't have to worry about any of his attacks. And obviously his melee isn't going to do much to us. So, progressing through level 30 through 35, I've got decent level ups, but I wish they were a little bit better, but go ahead and show you the stats anyway here. Nice way to level up, gives you 3,200 experience for each run, and you can usually one or two round him at this level. So let's go ahead to our main plot point, shall we? And over here we find our tower here. Our tower located in the desert, as shown by the map, is one of the two places we haven't visited yet. So let's go ahead and find a place to land this airship. And down we go. And heading over to the tower, we shall face some very strong monsters if you're not careful. Kalindus Tyrannosaurus Rex was actually the weaker of the some of the strong monsters you'll see here. Including some Ankylosaurus, but wait, we can't get in. What's wrong with this? No, the cube won't do it. And the slab won't do it. So there's no way into this tower. Uh, what a pain. So let's go ahead to the second point where we have not been. And unfortunately you cannot land right next to the town. You have to go all the way through this forest, through the swamp. No, you can't go land there either because it's not a perfect square. You have to go all the way up here at this one point. It is the only point I know of that you can land. And what's this? An Ankylosaurus. Hi, Red Ankylosaurus. How are you doing today? I just want to go through here and... Ouch! Okay, let's try that again, shall we? And providing we don't run into any hard monsters, there becomes e easier monsters later on, including giants and trolls and zombos. So they're real easy to beat, and nice experience if you want to level up on the way. And we'll finally get to the town of... They call it Leifen... Suffin. Leifen something. Anyways... Okay, there's a Transcendent Rex, but what do you expect? It's Final Fantasy. And up here we find a strange guy in a robe here. Wait a minute. What do you get when you can't speak Leafenish? You get information that you can't not dish. You just walk around and speaking all day, and all they have to say is loopa 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 loopa. That's right, folks. They have nothing to say but loopa. And that slap's gonna be very important there. Why can't I learn the spell of nuke? Do -di -do. So yeah, we basically went here for nothing. But l wait a minute. There's somebody who knows Leafnish. I know, let's go back to Melmond. There was this guy who called himself... Um... Oh yeah. Um, what was his name again? Dr. Looney? Dr. Zuni? Dr. Uno? Um, Dr. Ooh, that's it. And there he is right there, checking out the graveyard. And with that slab, we shall learn Leafnish. And what he does is basically he just takes this lab from us, and now we can speak to our leafing people, hopefully. Do -buddy -do. And back to the town of Leafin we go here, where we found out our Leafnish friends here are descendants of the Sky Warriors, who are the predecessors of the Light Warriors. And 
unfortunately, 400 years ago, Timat showed up and decided to wreak havoc on their floating castle. And unfortunately for the Sky Warriors, they did not win. So now Timat has control of the floating castle and the air orb, or wind orb, however you want to look at it there. And you can go ahead and read less of the information here as it goes along. And yes, they even mentioned the uh, robots they built. Yes, a ancient civilization is more advanced than the current civilization. Well, I guess that's what you get for being stuck for 400 years in a isolated area there. But anyways, and once we get through talking with most of them, we'll find the one important guy we need to talk to here. He'll give us a very valuable item, the chime to enter the Mirage Tower. Yes, a bell. And if we look at this bell, made in Japan, I mean leafing, anyways. So let's go ahead to our Mirage Tower and take a quick peek at the tower and what's beyond it here. So, whoops, landing through our convenient area here and avoiding monsters once again. You can find out. And we go. And this is probably the easiest level in the castle you'll ever have to deal with. Second one is a little tougher there. You have to go through and a fairly large maze. But this is only half of it. So less than half actually. So we'll meet some familiar foes, including some mini bosses. The wizards and mummies. A lot of undead here. And once through there. And avoid our other saber tooth kitties. We'll finally get to the robot here, who has some valuable information for us. I think we've seen him before, haven't we? Hmm. Yeah, I think we have. But anyways, going through this room, we shall go ahead and run for the mummies here for the moment. And in the door, we meet our first mini boss, the Blue Dragon. The Blue Dragon has about 450 hit points, and you can cast a multitude of weird spells that are upgraded versions of Fire 3, Lightning 3, and Ice 3. Fortunately for us, we have the Ribbon equipped, and as a precaution, I'm going to cast Invisible 2, so his melee doesn't hurt us too badly. And all we have to do is simply fast ourselves up, and in two strikes, he will fall down here. He fall down and go boom! And once we defeat this blue dragon, we'll be able to go on to the second half, actually it's larger than half, of the air dungeon, which is actually called the Floating Castle. So, victory is ours, once again, terminated, and we got another puzzle. Oh joy. next time when we explore this high-tech tower and defeat our final elemental opponent, the Air Fiend, Wind Fiend, Timat. Magma WK signing off. Stay tuned. No, that isn't relevant in any way.